Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Crime Circus. My name is Drip Drop, and I'll be your host as always. Was the movie set of Rust cursed? This woman being interviewed by a detective shot herself in the foot on set. Prior to Alec Baldwin putting a bullet into the director and a cameraman. This was the prop master. She may or may not have handed Hannah the gun. We're going to have to listen, watch, and observe and come to our own conclusion of what this lady's involvement is in the Rust movie set shooting. A very short side note before we get into this interrogation. Some people have accused me of just uploading raw interrogation videos downloaded off of some unknown public library website. It's not true. The truth is, I single-handedly go to great lengths to obtain these files, edit these files, and present them to you. In fact, I spend between 20 and 40 hours editing each and every single release. Usually the initial audio on these files is absolute garbage, but I know a lot of you already know that out there because there are other interrogation channels and they don't do anything to the raw files. I'm one of the only actual interrogation true crime channels that goes to great lengths to enhance the actual files. That's why in other channels, sometimes you'll only hear the sound in one side of your earbud or one side of the speaker. And typically the volume's so low, you can't actually understand what anybody's saying. And a lot of the times the background noise is so extreme, it'll give you a headache and you want to click out of the video within five minutes. I feel your pain, I've been there. I've clicked through some of those other channels and I won't be going back. My place is right here at Crime Circus, and I've got a lot of original exclusive interrogation videos to present to the world. I'm going to be doing a little series on this investigation, because here at Crime Circus we're investigating the death on the movie set of Rust. I spent a long time editing this interrogation video. I had to remove, silence, and edit about 5,000 coughs between the detective and the attorney. Also the body cam kept beeping and I had to remove as many of those as possible. It wasn't easy, but I did it for you, the viewer, because I care. I take great pride in enhancing these interrogation videos and presenting them to you, because I do have the best supporters in the world. And if you don't want to hear shoutouts, just skip ahead a few minutes and you'll be right inside the interrogation room. I'm blessed to have the wonderful supporters that I do. And I don't give nearly enough shoutouts a lot of people deserve shoutouts, and for my 100k special, I'll be giving shoutouts to as many people as possible that have helped make Crime Circus what it is. Additionally, recently a police department sent me a folder full of Blu-ray discs, and I don't have a Blu-ray player, so I just had to spend $150 on a Blu-ray player to hook it up to my laptop. But I do that for you, the viewer, because I know you want to see the videos that are contained within these Blu-ray discs. I will get these Blu-ray files converted, edited, and presented to you right here in Crime Circus. We've got some really high quality videos coming your way very soon. Make sure you're subscribed and the notification bell is clicked so you never miss a release. I try to do at least one per week, usually two. A huge shout out to one of my greatest supporters, Travis. Always swinging through the live chats, always hitting me up with those knocks. I super appreciate it. And a huge shout out to one of my long-term supporters, Black Hippie. I appreciate you. A wonderful lady named Joetta has been supporting me since I was just a baby on YouTube. And that doesn't go unnoticed. I see you and I appreciate you. Florida Baby, Rhonda Cherry, SP. Can't forget about Laura. I appreciate you. Old Man, Lou, L Boogie Bella. And I've even lost some supporters just for supporting the Roma army. But I don't mind cutting off dead weight. I give shout outs to who I want here at Crime Circus, the ones that deserve it. Shout out to Daylight Disinfectant, he'll always be inside of my luggage. And of course, Mark in Ireland. Super appreciate my circus fam. And that's only a small handful of the people that deserve shout outs, but this is an interrogation channel, so I can't just do a million shout outs in my intro. You know who you are, and I do appreciate you. Hit me up anytime in the comments, I'll be there. 
We're almost at 100,000 subscribers here at Crime Circus, and I appreciate every single supporter that I have. It's looking like very soon we're going to have that super special 100,000 super celebration here at Crime Circus. So it's as good a time as any to consider joining my Patreon or YouTube membership, or donating during live chats, or smashing the super thanks button underneath the video. Everything helps me present this show, obtain these videos, buy Blu-ray players, and edit the files to do what I do for you. Anyways, if you believe you deserve a shout out and you haven't got a shout out yet, I promise I'll be giving you a shout out soon. I know who my supporters are and I appreciate each and every single one of you. Anyways, let's jump right into this interrogation and see what Sarah has to say for herself. Sure. And are you okay if we start with um, Crimson DNA real quick? Yeah. Sure. Um, my Crimson text like cannot stay late today. I'm really done at four. So let me go back for a second, okay? Sure. Writer's palm is what they call this part. Did you see the um, LA Times article? No, I don't. I've had like a couple people send it to me, and since I'm not a subscriber, I can't. Everybody, you know, I've, I've got it. I'll send it to you just so you have it. Okay. That is important mm -hmm. for you guys to see what's. Mostly left. I mean, I, I spent a ton of the time. The male one, right? <laughs> the one that we did like last weekend yeah. or something? Yeah. I can't, yeah. But I can see every um, single other one except for that one. I know, because I'm in it, so it's really, no. She spent so much time digging, 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 coming up with all kinds of bizarre, you know, stuff that she's with him. And I, no, we're not going there, we're not going there. I talked to, um, <coughs> I talked to uh, Lisa this morning, too. Lisa. Tarako. Do you know who she is? I, I don't. I do. <laughs> She's my ex-wife. Oh. Isn't that weird? <laughs> oh, okay. Did I tell you that? Uh-huh. Yeah. You know, my two oldest children are, we have two children ago. My youngest daughter from the other marriage, about a week and a half ago, she goes, Lisa's in the case. I'm like, what? No, Lisa's not in the case. Yeah, she was Dave's, Dave's attorney. Yeah. Uh -huh. So what does she have to say? Well, we were just talking about, you know, everything thus far, and I talked to Hanny, Hanny, Hannah's attorney pretty often. Jason. Uh, I think Jason's from, I think he's from the hotel. Did you watch him? Yeah. It's pretty special around here, I guess. No, this is a good attorney. Was she an attorney when you guys were together? She was in law school. I was already. I was with. I was at the time. I was with the uh, New Mexico legislature. I was staff attorney. There. There. <laughs> you, know. you didn't want to do like a uh, what's that I one show? Better close call. Yeah. 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 You know, I was a little. We were already divorced before. I'm breaking bad now. So um, no, mm -hmm. she was with she was with the DA's yeah. office here in Santa for a while. Really? Yeah. Gotcha. Um, All right. I think when we got divorced, she was with the DA's office, office and then we got the DA's office done. So. I'll take you to that section. I'll be in the wash line. Okay, thank you. All right. Take the rest of the day off. <laughs> So before we begin, yeah. um, tell me what you, how the structure of the interview is going to go. Um, so it's pretty much just, I just need some things cleared up um, more than anything. 
about, um, I know your first interview is like pretty short. I wasn't there for your first interview. Obviously since then, a lot of stuff has come into light. Probably not a lot that you haven't heard before. Um, just let it. Can we ask you a few questions? Yeah, of course. I have some photos that I want to show you. You guys can kind of give me your um, intel on everything, or what you think about it. Um, my Do you have a theory of the case yet? A bit. Can you tell a little me? A bit. Off we'll get the photos. Um, it didn't match his right there. Yeah. Okay. It did not match Lisa's. Really? Yeah. I've been hers until a lot more nefarious. She's pretty dead set on it. I'll say that. Oh, she's she doesn't have like opinions. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, like I told everybody, just be honest. Like, if you don't know something, don't be afraid to tell me you don't know. Um, if you weren't present, like, or weren't a part of it or anything. Just, um, I uh, have to talk about like stuff you heard from other people. Okay. Okay. Um, I am gonna have. I don't know if I had to do this, but. Oh, you started zero rushing around here. There it is. And you can you can wait until he comes to do anything, but that's pretty much just your rights. Because obviously I'm asking you very specific questions. Yeah. No, you're not in custody or anything of the sort, but um, I'm gonna be asking very specific questions. Okay. Okay. Um so and you can wait for him when he comes in, just initial them and then initial yeah. these ones. Yeah. Okay. It's just that you understand your rights. You came in here. So there's two cameras. So obviously there's a camera and a mic in the room. Um, we use this as a backup just in case if you know anything here shall fail. Um, like doing it, sometimes these work a little bit better than everything. Okay. So no problem. How's everything been? Uh, not, not great. No? <laughs> no. Um, I mean, the initial shock wore off a couple weeks afterwards, but it's not been easy. Yeah. Are you working again or not? Not right now, no. Um, I'm just not ready yet to go back. Are you going to go back to do the same stuff? Maybe. I don't know. After, you know, being in process of what I initially wanted to do, which just kind of in my lap. Yeah, didn't you say you were like going to school for something else or you were doing I, something else? Yeah, I mean, I had always wanted to do film, but I was also studying to be in medicine. And okay, then, that's what I thought, that you were trying to do something in healthcare. Yeah, initially. Okay. Okay, thank you so much. Alright, so, um, I think Sarah statement of rights, waiver of rights, um, she kind of do them, but I said we'd wait for you. I'm doing this protocol for everybody. I said just because I'm asking obviously very specific stuff. Do you understand these rights? Yes. <laughs> no, did you ask me to say that? I had to read okay. through them. Okay. Well, no, you can read them, but do you think you understand them? Yeah. Okay, because you have certain constitutional protections. Okay. Okay. All right. I know you have nothing to hide, but it's my job to make sure you understand that you know, some people are like, hey, I've read nothing to hide. I didn't do anything, but I just do not want to talk. I do not want that to happen. Mm -hmm. Okay? You're okay with that? Yeah. Okay. Make sure you are. Like I said, if there's anything that you don't want to answer, just say. Okay. Okay? So Lisa was in here with, with Dave? They, no, they haven't come in here. I just talked to her on the phone earlier today. Yeah, I came in. Last, last week, before two weeks ago. Who did they? 
Can I get copies of both of those? Of course. Be good. All right, we're just going to invite in, okay? okay? So, will you kind of go over a little bit um, of your job history in relation to film? Yeah. Um, so, I started out on production in two, late 2019. Okay. And I got a job as in the art department and in that job I became the onset decorator. Okay. Um, and <clears throat> I just had personal connections uh, from friends who work in the industry so they were able to get me started. And then uh, I was still working as a EKG tech or cardio technician. Um, at the time, so I would kind of go back and forth because I had, I was PRN, so I was able to make my own schedule. Um, so I took a break for a little bit, um, and stayed in the hospital. And then I asked for one of the, uh, a line producer if he had any work that I could do. And so, um, that's how I ended up being a prop master, which was last year, uh, little over a year ago. I think it was in October. Okay. Um, and then I just gradually kept making connections and I stayed in the prop master position. Okay. What does the prop master entail? Um, basically, uh, we're responsible for kind of acquiring, well, breaking down the script first and seeing what all the actors physically like hold um, because that's what a prop is. It's anything that the actor holds or touches. Um, so I break the script down, I make a list, and then I, uh, acquire all of those. And, um, I learned from other prop masters that a lot of prop masters, they work behind the scenes, so they have a team on set who's running props, but I've always been on set helping with getting the props to the actors. Um, and in this case, yeah, the, the guns are also considered props as well. Okay. Do they, um, you know, does that job require you to have, like, any sort of certifications or anything? No. Or any formal training? No. I mean, it's kind of just, I, I don't really, I mean, you need to train to understand what it, they do, but it's not, like, formal training. Okay. Did you work um, with guns? Yeah, I worked on one other, well, two other productions with guns. Okay. Um, one, I was the actual armor, and then the other one... I was just an assistant, not an armor assistant. I was working in props, but they only had me work with uh, fake guns. Okay. And how did you learn how to work with guns? Uh, I learned from Seth Kenny uh, early this summer. Okay. Is it early summer? Yeah. Or July. Were both of those sets prior to this or after? Uh, you were working with guns? Prior. Okay. So you didn't have any training before? Before uh, the first time you worked with guns? No. Okay. How did you learn? Uh, Seth kind of just gave me a rundown of how to handle them, load them, show people how, when they're safe, and how to call things out to make everyone aware of what's on set. And, yeah. Okay. Um, are you a union member? Uh, I'm overflow, so I'm gaining my days to be on union. Okay. What union are you working at? The local 480. Local. Where is it like, based out of? Um, I'm not sure. It's in it's in New Mexico. It's New Mexico's, but I don't know what city. Okay. Might be Albuquerque, just because I know a lot of filming is mainly there. Uh, most cities no, are in New Mexico. Okay. So how much did you handle the guns and ammo on Rust? Um... I mainly handled them when they were, it's called a cold gun. So uh, it was me helping Hannah out um, when they needed to be on set. So I would help hand them off to actors. Uh, and then on days, okay. uh, on days that they're 
was gun firing, I would assist Hannah with loading the guns and handing them off. Okay. Um, so who hired you for rest? Uh, Roe Walters. And was that just through word of mouth? Uh, just over the phone, yeah. Okay. Can you kind of tell me about, because, I mean, you're all independent contractors pretty much, right? Mm -hmm. Not specifically. Who do you work for then? Well, I mean, we're hired by Age Production. So, I, I mean, yes, we're independent, but you're also working under the union. So, uh, But you're hired by Age Production, and each project, that's like who you work for. Okay. And so, but you're under Seth's license, right, for PQ? For that, yeah. To, and what does that entail? It just means that I'm allowed to work with his the, the guns that he loans out to the productions. Okay. Something is... We just got new ones. What is it? And it's a camera. So I was explaining to her, there's, I mean, there's a camera in here, obviously, but we use our body cams for backup in the event that something ever happened with, you know, what's in here because it's older equipment. Mm -hmm. But it's like, they just gave us these like last week or the week before. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what is that? It's, little, it's that it's recording. Oh. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's a little. Like, that it's here. And it yeah. It's <laughs> a little abrasive. Though. My last one was like, just like a little simple wire that kind of went on. Oh, yeah. But, Let me talk about uh, Interject is just from a legal point of view. When you say independent contractor, typically think of somebody who's got a a company that she's formed or an LLC. She's being hired as an individual by the production company. Right. Working towards getting a, to become a member of the union by doing so many days. Yes. Okay. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. right. So I just want to make sure that structures. Yeah. Well, it seems like there's not really like a structure structure to film so no. there you kind of like just buy the production by production sure. pretty much yeah. um so uh with rest how many guns were brought onto that set i i can't give you an actual number because i don't know the number but i want to say maybe close to 25 do you have the invoices Mm -mm. Would you like them? Do you have them? I do. Yeah, that I, would be great. I, I may actually have that them. Would, yeah, so. On my phone. Yeah, we're okay. looking into getting all that, and then obviously... I can get you the invoices of the guns and the rounds. Okay, and that was the other one that so we're looking into getting. Find that. Um, so what's the process for, like, bringing all this on the set? Um, mainly, so we carry them in these specific socks that, um that the guns stay in and that's what we keep them in until they're being pulled out for the scene. And so usually Hannah will go and check things with Dave. Uh, and so I'm talking about prior to oh, prior. Starting. Oh, yeah. okay. like how do you acquire them before? Okay. Um, before taking them on the set. Oh, got it. Okay. Um, so, um, well, in this case, Seth broke down the script, saw what was needed for each scene, or, sorry, uh, each character. Okay. And, um, and so he put them aside, and then he kind of just dictated what uh, amount of ammo we would need, uh, what would be best, and he gave those off to me, and we put them in a safe, the guns. Okay. So where did you pick them up from? From from PDQ Props office. Okay, and that's in Albuquerque, right? Yes. We're talking to email address. Oh, yeah. That's the the rounds from two different groups. And do you know where the address is? For who? For uh, PDQ. Uh, one twenty six Monroe Street. I think it's a, I'm like. Did you already send it? No. Let me make sure. I don't have an address. Um, okay, so you picked them up from, and you picked them up from PDQ. Yes. Okay. Guns and ammo. Yes. On the same day. Uh, yes. And you and Hannah went together. 
Yes. Okay. And then um, did they go directly up here from there, or? They stayed with me, um, safe in my home. And then uh, from there, uh, when we had our presentation for, uh, it's, it was kind of like a show and tell before the uh, filming started. Uh, that's when we took them to set and we put them on the safe that was in the truck. Okay. Do you remember what day that was? Uh, I believe it was, I want to say the 4th, October 4th. Okay. It, I think it, it was the Monday uh, of the week of the filming. First week of filming. Yeah, because I think filming started on the 6th, yes. according to call sheets. Yeah, starting on that Wednesday, yeah. Do you have a call sheet for the day of the shoot? Mm-hmm. Very young. All right. Do you know how much ammo was supplied? I don't. Okay. If you had to guess, what did you pick up first day? Um, I know that he gave us a lot of um, quarter blanks. He didn't give us many dummies. That's what Hannah was... Um, concerned about, so I later had to go back for more dummies. Um, I want to say, you know, like over 900 rounds. Okay. I'm not sure. Initially? Actually, initially, yeah. Do you know how many blanks were? I don't. Supplied? And then how was it, like, I guess, how did it look when you guys picked it up? What was it in? Was it... It was in a... Well, each... Um, there's usually 50 rounds to a small box, mm -hmm. um, and then all of those were inside a bigger white cardboard box. Okay. Uh, a, a couple different ones. Okay. So the rounds themselves were in the white cardboard boxes? Yeah, and then they were all stored in a bigger one. Okay. And then how many more times did you have to go back to pick up more ammo? Um, once from, from Seth at PDQ... And then another from a guy named Billy Ray, uh, and I think his is called Slots and Props. You have that. And how much did each of them, did we go pick stuff up? I don't, remember, I don't remember how much Seth gave us, but I remember that um, Billy Ray only gave us Dummies and it was about like two or three boxes. Two or three boxes. Yeah. Do you know what uh, caliber? Uh, I think forty-four forties. That was it. Okay. So that's all that came from Billy Ray, though. That, as far as I know. None of the forty-five one colts. Not that I'm aware of. Is there ever any ammo that came from anyone else besides PDQ and Billy Ray? Um. Well, I know that Hannah brought um, gun belts that had dummies in them already, and she brought that giant green bin, I believe, that was in the truck, um, but I just don't know if she brought anything of her own in that. Uh, but I know that she had those dummy rounds in the gun belts, so those are the only ones I'm aware of. Okay. Do you know what caliber those were? No. Do you know about how many there were? No. But she only brought dummies? Mm, that part I don't. And do you know where she got them? Uh, she had them from a prior production. And is that what she told you? Um, no. I mean, I, I believe she just brought those from the production, so I just assume that that's where they were. Well, you don't know that. Okay. They could be her own from whatever. Okay, so I just assume. Okay, okay, so, so I want you to be really careful when you're answering these questions. Okay. Because... Here's what human nature is. We want to answer, we want to help, and especially that's your nature. And in doing so, sometimes we'll think that we remember, but we may not actually remember. We think that we know, but we really don't know. Okay. So you've got to be the guardian so of your precise. own gate, okay? okay? All right. Be careful. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so like I said, if it's not something that, like, you know for sure, if it's not a fact, then... Okay. It's okay to just say that. Okay, totally fine. Got it. Okay.
Um, so who's in charge of safety? Uh, Hannah and Dave and uh, the stunt coordinator. Which mm -hmm. uh, was Alan. And what aspect of safety are each in charge of? Um, just set safety uh, in general. Um, and specifically Hannah, gun safety, and Dave overall set. And with uh, the stunt coordinator stunts. Okay. Um, I know you've had some previous experience, like, on other sets. Do you know what a safety bulletin is? Yeah. Okay, can you kind of describe it to me? Um, the safety bulletin just kind of goes over, like, the protocols. Um, there's different ones. So, for example, there's the one that is specifically for weapons. Okay. Um, and then I know that I think there's other ones for, like, you know, different Wranglers and stuff like that, and lighting equipment and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Did you ever see any for rest? No. Never? No. How did you get, um, like, distribution of, like, the call sheets and stuff like By that? By email. By email? Yeah. Okay. Um, so this is, have you ever seen Safety Bulletin before? Uh, yeah. Okay. So this is just kind of like an industry-wide example. Mm -hmm. of them and so you never saw anything like this with no the rest no okay do you who's in charge of distributing, distributing. Um, the like call sheets uh the second ad and that is um trying to uh, ten ten barrera i think is his name and how would he distribute them email do you still have that, those threads? Yes. Okay. And then none of these were attached to them? No. Um, did you ever see anything pertaining to safety on the call sheets? Mm, not that I read over. I mean, for the main part, when it came to each call sheet, we just look at the general things that, you know, was for that day, and then we would just go. Okay. But you never saw anything you know, like dealing with the horses or dealing with firearms or anything else, any protocols that they put out? I don't think so. Okay. What about safety meetings? Uh, we had a few safety meetings, um, specifically when there uh, was a lot of movement going on or gunfire. I think in total we had two or three. During the whole time? Yeah. Okay. Do you know if there was a safety meeting on the day of the incident? I don't remember there being one. Who usually put on these safety meetings? Dave. And what would he talk about during them? He would... Um, just, Do you remember, like, the main points of them? Main points was just, like, going over what to watch out for. Um, and any time that we had gunfire, he would just and they tell us to make sure to protect our eyes and ears. Um, and then with the movement, it would mainly be talking about horses coming through and just watching out for them and watching your pack and everything. Okay. So pretty much just firearms and horses. Yeah, that was the main concern. And then how often would you say the horses were worked with? Every day. Every day? Mm -hmm. What about the guns? Um, every day, just not live gunfire every day. Okay. But they were almost always with the actors holstered with nothing in them. Okay. Um, how many days of live fire was there um, with what you guys had completed so far? Yeah. Uh, I think maybe four. Okay. What's your experience in, uh, like, safety meetings and stuff on previous stuff you've done? Um, I mean, I've only, uh, so I was never a part of any form of safety meetings when it came to uh, Dead for a Dollar one, just because I would come in later in the day and work with a different unit. Uh, the only time that there was a safety safety meetings on a production for me specifically was when I did deal with weapons in the summer and we would 
Um, I think we only actually had a safety meeting once or twice, and it was just going over the initial of or, uh, what guns we would use okay. for that set. But all the other ones, I haven't had any guns on them. Okay. Today's look familiar. He's actually from Bedford, Oh, are they really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Um, so who teaches as far as, like, gun safety? Is Hannah the only one that does that, or does anybody else do it? Hannah. Okay. Yeah. Did you ever attend one of her, like, training sessions or anything? Yes. Can you tell me about it? Um, so there was one, I think it was the day, both, no, it was the same day as the show and tell. Um, okay. And a bunch of our actors came, he taught them how to do quick draw, was telling them, or showing them, or giving them an option of what to wear um, for the gun belts, just because they had to be adjusted properly for them, and um, kind of told them what they would mainly be shooting, and uh, was just having them practice with blanks, and uh, and then some of them practiced with, like, their shotguns, um, and then... The other safe, or sorry, training day was with Alec Baldwin, I think, the second day that he was around, um, and they were practicing up by the church. I wasn't personally there initially. Um, I came over to a, a later during his training to help him figure out how to wear his holster and his knife sheath. Okay. Um, did you ever, like, did you ever do, like, a class or anything or go over, um, you know, for us, we call them, like, general safety rules with firearms and things like that? Um, during, like, our first meeting, I, I remember her talking about, like, general safety rules with the firearms, but, I mean, I wouldn't be able to remember everything that she said. And that's okay. Um, so, on your guys' show and tell day... Um, did you help with that? I did. Okay. Did you help, um, show the actors how to use the guns? No. Okay. Did you load any of them for them to practice? No. Okay. So it was all hand and that's pretty much true. Yeah. So what did you do at that time then? At the time, I was just standing by to watch. That, that was it. Okay. I didn't technically have to be there. I think I was waiting for, oh, we were waiting for our truck to come over because that's when we were going to put the safe on there. So I was waiting for that. Okay, got it. Um, did she, or did you witness um, when she was training, did they do, you know, I hate to call it live ammo, but like, um, just like real bullet practice with, well, like the blanks. Yeah, just blanks. Okay. Yeah. And no live ammo though, actual live ammo? No. Okay. Um, did you ever hear anybody voice any safety concerns at this time? No. Um, did you see anything that shouted out unsafe to you? No. Uh, what about, I mean, not just that day, but during the entire production? I mean, no. Um, I don't know, is that a good time to talk about my misfire? No, let's keep it a secret. <laughs> It's not that much of a secret. Okay. I kind of figured. <laughs> that was about it. I'm going to ask about it anyway, so if you want to talk about it. Well, I mean, it's, it, it'd be, like, unsafe, but, um, uh, I mean, it was an accident, and it, uh, you know, I always, if I'm helping out, I always do it in a safe manner, and it was pointing at the ground, and it doesn't have a projectile, so no one got hurt. Right. Um, Why don't you back up for me and kind of tell me what happened with it? Yeah, um, so that day we had three guns on set and, you know, we typically were moving at a kind of fast pace. So I was helping Hannah um, with the guns. And so I was reloading after one of the takes. I was reloading a character. His name is Ike. I was reloading his Colt. Um, and he just had uh, quarter load blanks in his. So he had six rounds and so I took those out, and after they were discharged in the scene, and then I was putting in six new ones. And um, the with a Colt, the hammer, or like it's it's kind of weird to 
load it. So after I close the loading gate, you have to pull the hammer back all the way while simultaneously pulling the trigger and then kind of release both slowly. And the hammer slips from my thumb and it discharged too quick. Okay. And you then, understand how it goes, right? So you pull it back, you try to... I'm so not a revolver person. So. Okay. Well, yeah. Yeah. When I mean, you pull maybe. it back, you're, you're feeling releasing the, the trigger and the hammer to the cocked safety position. Mm-hmm. The base of your, your finger and its primer. I mean, it sounds like it's pretty easy for... It happens. It, not yeah. a bunch, but it happens. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so I... Uh, ever, like people were there they knew what happened and then um, I apologized to the crew and then I proceeded to um, tell Seth I told the production designer I told told Ro so that way they everyone was just kind of aware of what happened but also literally like five minutes after that happened uh, the stunt double accidentally discharged his, the Henry rifle I don't know how, because he was inside of a cabin. No one else was in there. Um, but, yeah, I discharged somehow. Okay. But she did self-report. Okay. And you reported it to, you said, Seth, Ro, and who else? Mm-hmm. Uh, the production designer, uh, Brian. Do you know his last name? Norvell, I think. And then how did you report this to them? I just texted them. Okay. You still have those text messages? I do. Awesome. And then what was the outcome of it after you reported it to them? Um, they just, they just said, okay, or copy. Um, and that was it? Yeah. Okay. No, like, incident report done? No None. paperwork filled out? No. Anything? Um, what about with the other accidental discharge? I don't know. Okay. So, oh, another safety thing. Uh, I think one of the special effects poppers, uh, it, it uh, exploded uh, when it wasn't supposed to, when people were near it. Okay. Uh, but yeah, that was just... That was the other indoor one, right? I don't think it was indoor. I think it was on a porch. Um, oh, on a porch. I don't actually... I, that's just what I think. I just okay. remember here from the, hearing it explode. Okay. Do you know, uh, what day was your accidental discharge? Uh, I believe on October 16th. Okay, and who was around when it happened? Um, I was off to the, the side away from others, but my uh, other assistant, Nicole, was there, and then uh, she was standing next to me, and then um, one of the special effects guys named Roman. Okay, so not too many people. No. All right. Um, as far as the safes that you guys use to store the guns, who locks it when you guys aren't using? Who locks it mm-hmm. when we're not using it? Well, if you're not, like, you, you don't leave it open, right? No, no. I mean... So who's in charge of making sure it's locked? I mean, either me, Hannah, or Nicole. Okay. I'm not to supplement your questions, but... Maybe you can explain to her the protocol of the safe. When it's open, why it's open, when it's open, what happens, what happens after it's open. Just take it through. Yeah, I mean, it has a keypad on it. Um, and so you type in the code to open it. You take out the guns that you need. We put them on our cart, and then we lock it up right away. We never left it open. Okay. And then uh, the prop truck? Yeah. Who is in charge of that prop truck? Uh, I mean, it's leased under the production, but it's watched over by... Hold on, Robert. What do you mean by who's in charge? So, I mean, these trucks are... I I don't know if you've been on a set before, but there's these big... um, Semi. It's not a set. It's smaller. It's kind of like bigger than a moving van, but... It's just like 40 feet. Yeah, it's, it's pretty big, but that's where they keep all their stuff. Mm-hmm. So, the safe, ammo, the car, sort of. So, I think it's who's in charge of making sure that truck is secured and locked. And so that would be the only reason I was asking who's in charge because it was the truck driver 
and he may be in charge of moving it. Mm-hmm. So I'm just trying. I'm, I'm not trying to be a jerk. I'm just trying to figure out when you say charge, what do you mean by charge? Who would be in charge of locking it up? Okay. And the teamster would. I mean, we would close the gate at night, but in terms of, we never had locks on them unless if you know the teamster would lock it up after we left. Okay. Who was the teamster? I don't know his name. What do you look like? Um, Hispanic, dark hair, older. I don't remember a whole lot about him. So, did this truck get locked up at the end of every day? I don't know because they would sometimes move them to different locations, and I don't know if they locked them up after we left. Um, but we would close the doors and the tailgate, but I don't know if they were ever locked. Okay. Um, I mean, can you recall a morning that you guys came in at the start of shift and it was locked and you had to wait for somebody to unlock it? Uh, no. Okay. I don't know when I went back after everything had happened. Then, and that's when it was locked up. That's when it was locked. Yeah. Okay. Um, as far as the guns go, when you put them into the safe, are they checked for ammo? Uh, we always unload them before they're put in the safe. Okay. And that's during lunch too? Uh, yeah. So every gun is unloaded before it goes in there? Yeah. Okay. And then, so whose job is it, at, you know, when they're going back into the safe, whose job is it to check and make sure that they're unloaded? I'm usually Hannah. Okay. What do you mean usually Hannah? Like I would help her, but it's her to Hannah's job as an armor. Do you ever do any of the safety checks with the guns? Yes. What about uh, safety checks with the ammo? I know there's a specific way that you guys have to check that they're dummies, right? Yeah. Okay. Can you kind of go over that with me? Yeah. So uh, the easiest way to tell uh, if it's a dummy is you rattle it and you hear a BB inside, so it means there's no gunpowder. Um, and I just learned this on this side, but some of them that don't rattle, they sometimes have holes on the side of them. And that's how you tell if it's done. Okay. Um, who loads the guns? Who loads? Mm-hmm. Both me and Hannah. Did Nicole ever load? No. And then who loads all the ammo into like the prop belts, like the bandoliers and stuff? Uh, Anna. You were Hannah? Yeah. But they were already loaded, so we never really had to load any into them. Okay. But they fall out of there, right? Um, that... Real? I mean, Hannah said that they sometimes do, but they seemed like they were pretty snug, so I never saw any fall out or never found any just lying on the ground. Okay. Did you ever have to load any into the belts? Mm, I think I had to just place one or two at one point, but that was it. Okay. I think it was just for, uh, um, no, I don't remember whose belt it was. I, it, it was just like a couple miscellaneous ones where we'd have to realign them on the belt. Okay. So. Okay, just to make it look more full. So when ammo's not being used or it needs to be like placed back somewhere, where does it go? It goes back inside the prop truck. Inside the truck? Yeah. Just loose? Um, I mean, still in their boxes, in the green bin or those cardboard boxes, uh, or they would be stored inside Hannah's ammo bag. Okay, is that the... Um, are you talking about like the actual like, carrying bags or the, yeah the she had this like black it was like a mini duffel bag and she would put ammo in that boxes of them okay um so let's say if you guys loaded guns where would you pull ammo from from those boxes were they on the cart or in the truck uh they, it was kind of, in initially from the truck, but then she had them in that bag, and we'd usually pull from that bag, and she also had some in her fanny pack, and so the bag in the fanny pack is where we would get them from usually, after the initial, um, when we first pulled them from the truck on like our first shooting day, and then we had them in her bag. Okay. So would you carry the bag around or would it be on that cart? Um, 
and Canna left it on the cart. Okay. So you're always pulling from there, though. Or did you load in the truck? Um, we would, I think just from from the cart. Okay. So they would bag pretty much just on there full time? Yeah. I mean, Hannah decided to pull from. I mean, and then she would just put that on top of the cart, and that's what we would use. Okay. So is it yours and her responsibility to check each room then? Um, it's not like we don't both have to check it. It's just if one of us is going to load a gun, it's going to be our responsibility to check that gun. Okay. And then when you, I mean, what guns would, did you work with on set? Um, worked with Jensen's, uh, Swens, and uh, his name is Travis Hammer. And those were the only ones I really worked with. Okay. And what kind of guns were they? They were Colts, and then Jensen also had a shotgun. And um, and then the only time I dealt with Alex's gun was the day before, and it was cold, and he had to, like, toss it off to the side on a blanket, and that was the only time. The day before what? The day before the incident. Okay. And that's the only time that you had worked with his gun? Yes. Okay. Um, do you load dummies and blanks? Or um, I only load dummies when Hannah wants dummies. Otherwise, I don't load anything into it. And then blanks is when it's just going to be when we're going to have an actual, you know, a gunfight. Okay. But you would load it for actors of both? Yeah. Okay. Um, at the end of the day, where do you guys store the ammo? Uh, in those boxes in the prop truck, and then, I don't remember, I think Hannah left her bag on the cart, and the cart would go back in the truck as well. Okay. So everything would get put back into boxes. Yes. So pretty much you guys can essentially reuse rounds. Reuse, I mean, you can't reuse blanks, but you can reuse dummies. But Well, that's, yeah, that's, that's what I mean. Okay. As far as, like, sometimes they'd go in a box, and then those might come out of a box, and then get put back in a box. Yeah. Do you have a system to not getting rounds mixed up? I mean, you there. the boxes are labeled with, like, the caliber, and so we would usually put them back. Otherwise, there was also dummies that Hannah had in her fanny pack that she would keep in there as well. Okay. Um, when you guys... So if you put them back in... Did you guys just have boxes, like just the cardboard boxes on that cart? Or were they, did you keep that bag on top? The the black ammo bag? Yeah. That one was normally stored on the bottom. On the bottom? Okay. Yeah. And is it secured? No. What about, um, where is ammo stored during lunch? In the truck. In the truck? Or sometimes in the truck, and I know that Hannah has left it out a couple times on the cart. Um, a couple times we would take the cart back to the truck, and there were other days I think that we did leave it out on set away from everyone. Okay. What's the protocol for that? I don't think it really is a protocol. Okay. Just because, I mean, it's, it's movie ammo, so that, there's not really supposed to be any danger with it. But, I mean, obviously it says here that it can kill, but... Um, no one has access to the firearms or anything. Okay. Who all has the uh, code for that safe? Just me, Hannah, and Nicole. All right. Who has access to the prop truck? Me, Hannah, Nicole, and the prop truck driver. Okay. Is this the director, Huh? I'm sorry. Go ahead. You're right. Yeah. I've never I'm seen the assistant it. director get on our truck. Does he have, does he have access to I mean, it kind of depends on what you mean by access, like allowed or just can hop on whenever. Like, as in, you know, it's not locked, so anyone could get on, I guess. Okay. But the prop dri driver is there watching over it, and so... Um, and he's there all day? Yeah. Um, and so me, Hannah, and Nicole should have been the only ones that had access to it. It's not shared with any other departments? 
It was originally shared with locations, but after like the first or second day, it was just ours because they took off their stuff. Okay. And what did they have in it? Uh, like chairs. And, um, but then we had our director's chairs. They pulled off some other chairs that so I'm not sure what they were for. Okay. So you say it's common to have loose ammunition out. I mean, where anybody can pretty much get it, right? I mean, I'm not. I'm not sure. Uh, when I worked with the um, with the other movie, I only had a small amount of ammo that was stored inside of a locked box. But with this amount of ammo, um, Hannah didn't say what we were supposed to do with it, and so she was kind of leaving it out. So I thought it was okay. Okay. Don't you kind of work above Hannah though? Only on props, not armor. Okay. So she's kind of her own armor, armory, and um, props are two separate departments. The only reason she that I was like her supervisor was because she was my props assistant. Okay. But as far as the guns go, it's she calls the shots. Okay. Um, the, the Wranglers are in charge of the horses. She's in charge of the saddles and the blankets and the <laughs> everything that goes on. <laughs> Every, yeah, pretty much. Um, so who all used the props cart then? The props cart? Mm -hmm. You need to call it Hannah. All right. Nobody else had access or would use it at any point? No. Okay. Um, as far as your gun experience, have you ever shot a ribbon? No. Can Never? Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Okay. You had a call. Are the ones who have cards, but that doesn't mean somebody else couldn't have access to the prop card. I mean, it's just sitting there, correct? Yeah, I mean, we're usually watching over it, so and um, no one would have reason to use it. Did you ever find random stuff on it at all that didn't belong to anything that you guys were doing? No, but it's sitting there. And I, I'm sorry, but it's sitting there. You guys are standing there. Somebody else could be standing next to it too. I mean, you're not you're not precluded from standing next to the prop cart. Yeah, it's, it's, not, a, it's not like a five meter radius around no, there. So it was just always in line of sight. In line of sight. Somebody else could be just standing there. I mean, they would only be standing there if they were talking with us. Otherwise, exactly. people, yeah, didn't you know just stand next to it for no reason. Stand next to it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. somebody's talking to you or yeah, hanging out waiting for a scene. Yeah, right there next. Yeah. To it's at the scene. People are at the scene. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, Sorry. no, you're good. Um, incident day. Okay. Incident at the beginning. So, what time did the day start that day? 6.30. 6.30? Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> what guns were brought out in the um, morning? In the morning, it was just guns for Jensen, Swen, and Travis. And they each had Colts. And then they each had... Uh, Long barrel guns and uh, that were pulled in their scabbards on their horses. Okay, so how many would you say were pulled up? Six. Six? Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, seven because one of them has two holstered ones. Were any of them loaded? No, they were all cold. And by cold, do you mean empty or cold with dummies? Uh, empty. Okay. And those are the only ones pulled out in the morning? In the morning, yeah. Um, well, I guess we did move to the church um, later in the morning towards lunchtime. Okay. And uh, that's when Alex gun got added in, too. Okay, so his got pulled out later. Yes. So then there was an eighth gun. Yes. And loaded or empty? Uh, Hannah had loaded it with dummy. Did you watch her? No. How do you know that they were loaded with dummies? Because she asked Nicole for a box of dummies. Okay. And Nicole went and got the box? Yeah. Where did she pull the box from? From the truck. Did you watch her? No, I didn't go with her. Where were you? I was still um, outside of the church. Okay. And then were all those guns, all the other guns still present at that time too? Um, not, this is, his got put back because he didn't come back for the scene. Okay. And was that just a pistol? 
Um, he had two two colts okay. and a shotgun. So three of them were put away before our first season. Yeah, our people. Okay. And so Alex's gun was loaded with dummies prior to lunch. Uh, yes, because... Yeah. Yes. Okay. Do you know who handed Alex the gun at that time? Oh, wait. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, so the, the box of... I'm sorry. I got it wrong. So the box of dummies were... Uh, initially, we didn't have... And so... Sorry, I'm trying to get my words straight. Um, Alex's gun was cold because it was holstered. Um, in that scene, his, you know, his character and the... Um, and our 15-year-old actor, they were helping each other get into the church because Alec was wounded. So his gun was holstered, and he didn't have anything in it. So I don't think Hannah did load it before that. Okay, but you don't know? I guess I should say I don't know. Okay. No, that's a great answer. This is all that happened, but I can't be certain. Okay. No, it's just fun. All right. Um, so then what happened... Uh, with all these guns when you guys broke for lunch? We took them back to the safe. Who's we? Me, Hannah, and Nicole. Okay. And how did you transport them to the safe? In their socks and our hands. Okay. So the cart didn't go back? No. Um, where was the cart at the time? Uh, at the church. Outside of the church. Okay. All right. Can you mark where the cart was? This is not our cart right here. Uh, well, these were, no, this was all done. Well, obviously after the incident happened. Yeah. So, I mean, basically, when... You know, so this, I know that this is like that truck on the side. These mm -hmm. were those like black tents. Our, our cart was right next to this. Like, so, right in there. Okay. And then in that same location, which feels kind of like here, but, yeah, just around But there. that's not it. I don't, I don't, I can't tell. Please. I don't know what that is. It just kind of looks like a car, but I don't no, know. No, it's right here. You got me. Oh, I got me. Okay. So, yeah, around here. That's the car right there? Yeah. Do you recognize that? Well, that's not, it's in front of me. No, it'd yeah. be very hard to I, see because we have crime scene tape all around. I, I went and, back and I saw it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you guys put them in socks and then you'll just walk them to the prop truck. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. They already were in socks in the safe. Well, no, they had their socks on the car after we took them out to give them to the actors. When we got them back, we put them in their socks and then transported them to the oh, sorry. <laughs> um, Do you remember how many you guys had at the time? Or how many you carried back? Mm -hmm. Five or six? Because I know we still had a full of the long barrel shotgun. Okay, but it took all three of you to carry them. I, yeah, I mean... It, not very good to just carry a pile of guns in your hands. Right. Um, who took Alex's gun? I don't know. Okay. Who, I mean, remember, uh, but the, well, Hannah took it, but I don't know if she put it in a sock and gave it to one of us or if she took it back herself, but she did take the gun from Alex. Okay. Off of him, at least. Yes. Okay. And then... What happened with all the other equipment that they were wearing? Like the bandoliers that got, and the holsters and everything. That got taken back to. Taken back to what? To the prop truck. Okay. And where do those go in the prop truck? We have a, um, <coughs> we have a line, or I don't know what to call it. Um, it it's like a, a ratchet. Uh, like a toe strap? Yeah, yeah, I guess. And it, it was hanging across our uh, the side of the truck on the inside, and we hang them on it. Okay. 
All right, what time did you guys break for lunch? 12.30. And what time did you come back? Um, close to one twenty. And during that lunch period, mm -hmm. um, did, did the three of you eat together? Yes. Okay, so you guys were all together that entire time? Yes. All right. Who took the guns out of the safe after lunch? I did. You took all of them out? Yes. Okay. How many were pulled out? Um... Six again. Okay. Did you hand them to somebody or did you carry all those yourself? No. It was, I handed some down to Hannah and Nicole when they were, they were at the end of the tailgate on the ground. So I handed a couple down and then I also carried a couple. Oh, five. Nine. Nine? Give me a second. Hold on. Oh, I'm forgetting Travis. Okay, hold on. This is all just after lunch. Yes. So we thought Travis was going to be out of back in, so I had. Do you want a piece of paper? I feel like I need to. Um, so it says eight or eight, but I forgot one. But you and had. We've been through this a few times. <laughs> I can't think. You were supposed to get that many. You ended up being this way, and you had. Oh, I'm sorry. Two fake. I didn't add the the prop or the fake guns. Two fake. Yeah. Okay, that's where I missed it. Okay, that makes sense. Um, yeah. Okay, so so we had. Tell me which actors: Jensen, uh, Sven, uh, Travis, and Alec. Travis never came back, so his were kind of unnecessary to take, but we kept them in their socks. Um, and on the cart or where? On the cart. Okay. And then Jensen, um, Jensen had two. He only, I mean, we technically didn't need to bring the long barrel guns back, uh, his, like, his shotgun, just because he I probably would have left it on his horse. I, didn't, I don't think he would have brought them up or took it out. Uh, and so he had his Colt. We had Sven's Colt and his shotgun. And then Travis has two Colts and a rifle. And then Alec has his cold. Okay. And you said you had to go back? Yes, because I forgot one of uh, a gun for Swen. Okay. So ten in all, the two are fake. Two are fake, yes. Where were the fake ones? Just on the card. Okay. Two on Swen, three on Travis, but they never went with him, right? No. Which was the one that you forgot? I forgot Swen's. I forgot his cult. Okay. What did you take out for him? He he wasn't on set yet. So he only he didn't he didn't have a gun yet. Okay. So all these are on the cart? Uh yeah, except Jensen. Jensen had one and uh that's all at the time. Um or here, let me be more specific with this. So Swen, I gave one to Swen, because Swen and Jensen have the same cult. Um, it's a matching pair. So they look like U.S. Marshall ones? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and uh, I gave one to Swen first. It had dummies, but the way that I always do dummies is I take previous ones that we've used that are indented, because um, that's how I know if it's a dummy after the well, it's already been checked. What do you mean indented? Uh, the primer. Okay. Um, so that way I know it's been used and it's in there. And then... Um, I took it to Dave, I showed him uh, the rounds on the inside, and then I took it to Swen, showed it to him, but then I saw Jensen, and um, I thought maybe he was going to be up first, because he was kind of standing outside the church, it looked like he was waiting to go in, um, so I told Nicole, I, well, this was also when I realized that I forgot another one of the other guns, because I needed a gun for Jensen at first, so then I told Nicole that since one was just sitting down under the tent to, that's that the gun only had dummies and it's already been checked by me, Swin, and Dave to just go ahead and give that gun to Jensen. And so I 
with it and told them I was going to go back, them as in Nicole and Hannah, I was going to go back to get the other Marshall gun so that way Swen would have one. And uh, and Hannah, at the time, that's when she said, cool, I'm going to go check this gun with, or Alex gun with Dave. Okay. So, so technically only Jensen and Alec would have had a gun. And you loaded one. Uh, yeah. Okay. And that's the one that, so you loaded it, showed it to a couple of people, gave it to Nicole, and then Nicole gave it to him. We gave it to Swen, and then Nicole went and took it to Jensen. He took it to Swen, then went and delivered it to Jensen. Yes. Correct. Who, who gave it to Jensen? Nicole. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Nicole gave it to him. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, were any other guns loaded at that time? Um, well, I mean, I guess Alex was loaded if she was checking it with Dave. Okay. Did you see her loaded? No. Okay. But, I mean, you guys keep all your stuff in the same area, right? Yeah. And all the guns were brought out? Well, yeah, but they were in the socks. Except for those two that were pulled out already. What, what do you mean, which two? Alex and Jensen's. Okay. But that's what I'm saying. Like, did she not load it at the same time you were loading? Do you guys not all stay together? I mean, we all, all kind took of... the guns to the cart. Yeah. And, um, what, like, we're always going in different directions, but Nicole is usually just, like, by the cart, but Hannah would do her thing and I would just do mine. But I don't remember loading it with her. Okay. I guess, I guess, in my mind, it's kind of weird how nobody saw this gun get loaded. Or well, is it possible? If, if you guys keep all your materials on one cart. Sure. Yeah. Sure. But if you had loaded Jensen's gun or Twins gun, whatever, that first gun first, mm -hmm. then you go take it to Dave mm -hmm. to review. Yeah. During that time, Hannah could have been loading the other gun while you weren't there at the cart. I mean, it's possible. Okay. Where was Dave when you had him check for them? Inside the church. Okay. And then where was Jensen and Swen and all them? Jensen was outside and Swen was sitting down under the tent. Outside the church. Outside the church. Directly outside the church. I mean, where this, where this black tent is. Okay. And that's why you thought he was going to be next to be in the scene. Because Jensen was standing like right here. There you go. Thank you. Okay. And so, but your cart was still here. Yes. When you came back. Okay. Um, do you know where Hannah was? At what point? Uh, where was she when you were loading? I don't remember. Okay. Do you know where she was when you took the gun to Dave? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, if you left the cart, who was watching the cart? Nicole. And she stayed there the entire time? Yeah. Okay. Um, what time would you say that you loaded that gun? Um, like 130, 135. Oh. <coughs> so pretty close after. Yeah. Oh, right. After, after they came back from lunch. So, they came, they, they, they left lunch. You don't hate me. So they left lunch, you said about 1.20, mm -hmm. you guys were left lunch, mm -hmm. right? So you go into the prop truck, open up the key, open up the, the safe, you hand out the guns to everybody. Mm -hmm. And they're carrying the guns, and the prop cart's already up there, mm -hmm. right? And the prop cart's already up there with the ammo on it. Yeah. Okay. And it's been up there, the ammo on it, yeah. during lunch. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, and maybe just, was it up there before lunch? Okay. Was it up there during the entire course of the day? Uh, not the entire course, because we started out in the in the western town. That's what I thought. What po at what point did it go from the western town up to the church, the prop cart, with the ammo on it? When we were moving up there for the next scene. When was that? I don't know. Prior to lunch or after lunch? Prior to lunch. Prior to lunch. Lunch was at 12.30, was it before 11.30? Yes. Okay. 
Was it before 10.30? I don't know. Yeah. So assume we're around 11.30, 10.30, we know that 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 prop that one with the with the animal gets moved up to the church, right? Mm -hmm. It's a prop cart with the, with the animal up there. It's unattended because there's no guns there, right? At lunch? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, and even prior, because you guys are doing the Western scene, it's being, it's up there. Yeah. Okay. So, 120, you go to the prop. You open up the safe, you hand these guns out to everybody, and you guys go up the hill. Mm -hmm. So, one, you say 130, 135, you've loaded the guns. Maybe it was that quick. I mean, it's only 10 or 15 minutes before you handed the guns out, you guys got up there, you took them out of the socks and loaded them. I mean, it moved pretty quick. Okay. All right. Just want to make sure. But I really do want to put that prop cart with the ammo on it unattended during a proportion of time. Right. Can I ask you a couple other questions? Yeah. So that morning, the, the, there was a crew that walked off, correct? Mm -hmm. And they were walking off. It was the day prior. It was the day prior. I thought it was, it was not the morning. Of, did you watch them walk off? No. I thought they just came and got their stuff in the morning is what I heard from Lane in the interview. Right. Again, you didn't witness though, right? Yeah, yeah. So. Thank you. Sorry. It was the day before. Um, there was like one person that came the next day to pick up some equipment and that was about it. But they were never <coughs> unattended. <laughs> notes. Huh? The notes. Yes, notes. Um... What about the belts? What about after lunch? Mm, we would have taken them back too. What happened? You did. We did. Okay. Alec kept his belt. He kept his over lunch. He had his holster and his knife sheath. He kept it on him. Mm -hmm. Just not the gun. Okay. Uh, kind of interesting. He didn't want to take it off, is what Hannah said, and so she just said that he would just keep it for lunch and come back. Okay. When you guys um, came back up the hill with everything, did you notice anyone in the tent area, buy it, anything of the sort? I don't remember. Okay. So pretty much all of Alex's stuff was already on him. Just the so. gear that would hold things. Yeah. Okay. All right. Did you ever handle Alex's gun after lunch? No. Um, do you know which gun was his? Yes. Can you describe it to me? It was like our other Colts. It's just it had a seven and a half inch barrel, so it was a lot more distinguished because it was longer. Okay. Um, it looked like the U.S. Marshals, but um, it just didn't have the same engraving. Okay. What color was it? Uh, it was... That's a weird way to describe it, but you know, like, how oil looks in the sun, like, on the ground? Mm -hmm. Like, that multicolor? Oh, yeah, yeah. It kind of looks like that, in my opinion. Okay. When you look at it, it's... But it's darker. It's more black, but you can still see some color in there. What about... Do they all have wood handles? Mm -hmm. Yes. you remember what color his was? Um, brown. Okay. Um, did it look like there was any movement of the cart after lunch? No. Um, did it look like anything had moved on it? No. Okay. Can you recall the setup of the cart and what was on it? I mean, like when we got there, mm -hmm. or I saw Hannah's bag on the bottom. I had a couple of miscellaneous items, like my gloves and an old headset um, that we had. I think our, uh, what's it called, our preliminary call sheet for the next day on it. Um, How many there? boxes of ammo on the top? I don't remember how many. Did you say more than one? I, was, I would say more than one, but I'm not sure because I can only I can only recall that box that I looked at after the incident. Okay, but you loaded a gun, mm -hmm. so from uh, gun belts. 
Wait, I took some out of their cartridges. You okay? So you loaded that gun belt ammo, not a box? No. They were they were from uh, yeah. We we had a gun belt that we took ammo from. Uh, it was a miscellaneous gun belt, I believe, uh, and it had like these brassy rounds that I pulled. Okay, and that's what you loaded Jensen's with. Yes. All right. So where were you when the shot went off? I was outside the church. About right next to my car. You're at the car. Okay. Can you tell me what you remember? Um, at that point? Just like when it went off? Yeah. Um, I was standing next to the cart with Nicole. We were probably talking. And I heard the shot go off. And I heard Joel scream. Um... I didn't know they were even rehearsing anything. No one did. Dave didn't call it. Uh, I was kind of just out loud asking, what was that? And I was just, you know, asking if it was a gun. People thought it was a special effects popper. They said, no, it was Alec's gun. I didn't know Alec even had his gun yet. I thought Hannah might have still had it. And I ran over to Jensen, and I, uh, because he was tearing inside the church. We were around, like right here um and I looked at him and I saw Joel on the ground clutching his shoulder I didn't know Helena was hit I didn't even see her um and uh Jensen told me to grab all the guns um or to secure them and I did that put them in their socks I ran back um uh, and I made a phone call to Seth at one point, uh, told him what happened, and I saw, or, and, but when the, when the gunshot went off, that's when I all of a sudden saw Hannah in front of it. She turned around, and um, she said, this wasn't supposed to happen. My whole career is ruined. And then she, and then the next time I saw her, she was checking the gun with Dave um, next to the church, on this side of the church. And then she was having a meltdown and the production designer was clutching onto her. I went over to her. She showed me the rounds and she said, I swear I checked. You went over who? Went over to Hannah and the production designer. Um, And she showed me the rounds and she said, I I saw them. And she had all six rounds in her hand and I saw that one of them didn't have the lid wadding on top. And so I took that and I went over to the cart because I had a suspicion of what happened um, and, or not what happened but just you know like to see if there was any other live rounds from the box that she pulled and so I started shaking the rounds and I found a few more in it okay so she handed you these she only, no I took the casing without the lead wadding okay so and what I, happened with the other ones I thought I uh, had them Okay. Did you see where she put them? No. So you only took the one out of... Just the one that didn't have the lid on. Why did you only take the one? Because I just went... I just grabbed that one to go compare it to the rest. Okay. And I saw that it had a silver primer, and then I saw in the box that it was a bunch of mixed primers, and that the other silver primers, I think, from what I remember, it, they were live rounds, too. Okay. And how do you know that? Because they didn't have and where did you put them after you checked them? I put them back in the box. In the box? Yeah. Okay. Um, and you didn't see what Hannah did with those other five? No. But you know you counted six? Yes. Okay. Um, did you see what happened with the gun after? No. I thought Hannah still had it. Or maybe you took it. I don't remember what happened with it. It was either, we either took it. I don't want to take it. Okay. So what happened with all the other nine guns? They got put back in the safe. I was originally carrying it back with Nicole and our art director, um, Daniel. 
he was helping us because Hannah was off on, you know, um, with Brian and halfway over, um, Brian called me and asked me if I could get Hannah's, um, the, or her penny pack. And so Nicole and Daniel took the rest of the guns that I had and put it back in the safe. And um, I took her fanny pack over to her. Okay. She was somewhere down in the town. Who? Hannah. Okay. At what point did you take all those guns down? Um, like 15 minutes after the accident, people, ambulance and everybody was already there. Uh, but I don't recall, like, after the incident. Okay. But it was after you had... After I had checked the box. Yeah. Okay. So where were all these guns at that point? They were all still in the crib. They were just in their socks. On the top or bottom? Both. Okay. So they were kind of spread out all over that cart. Yeah. Okay. And you took every single gun? From what I remember, yes. Okay. Did you watch Hannah transport that gun into the church? I saw her walk with it when she told me that she was going to check it with Dave. Okay. But that was it. I never saw her until after the incident after that. Okay. Did anybody else have possession of that gun? Not that I'm aware of. I had heard about this weird handoff that happened while I was down at the prop truck. What do you mean by that? Well, this is you heard this after the incident. Yeah, this is what I heard after the incident. A few days later was that Hannah brought the gun back to Nicole. Nicole and asked her to hand it off to Alec. Um, Nicole didn't know if it was checked or what was loaded in it, so she put it on the cart and then. I also heard that Dave grabbed it off the cart, and so I don't know what happened. But you saw Hannah walk in with it? Yes. Okay. And did you watch them do the safety check together? No, because I was on my way to the prop truck. Okay. Did you see Hannah do any check with that gun? No. And who brought it out of the church after the incident? I'm not sure. The next time I saw it, I just saw Hannah and Dave off inside the church checking it. Okay. Um, can you describe what each of those rounds looked like when Hannah was showing you? Um, they were a little more... They, they were not... I don't remember them being that brassy. Um, they, they looked a little aged. Uh, and I saw five of them with the wadding on top and then one that didn't. Okay. When you say wadding, do you mean... Projectile. The projectile. But it's not supposed to be a projectile because it's supposed to be inert. So you guys called that wadding because this is not a projectile because it's a dummy round. Okay. Yeah. And I mean, they're all iron caps. Yeah. On them. So. Gotcha. Thank you. They're all the same product. It's not like you could put them on a live round and they would still be a projectile that was fully functioning. Gotcha. Just that they had gunpowder in them. Right, right. Okay. Um, you know, this is more all the rumors that are flying around. Target shooting on set was one of them. I haven't heard that. I mean, I, well, I have heard it, but I never witnessed anything like that. No one said anything. I just was sent a text message from another prop master in town who had heard that she she and other people were targeted. She being him. Yeah. Him. It was this after the incident that you heard that, though? Yeah. I can't remember. It, it, it was like midnight when I received that text, and it was either the night of the incident or the night after. I don't remember which one. Okay. But nothing prior? No. Um, to your knowledge, were those guns ever moved out or taken out or 
anything of the sort. I mean, there's three of you with the code to yeah. save. No, not that I'm aware of. I mean, the only, like, there was, and I'm just wondering if people are talking about when Alec was practicing or with the guns when she was training him. That's the only time I know when she wasn't on set during filming and she was off training him. But the not have is an electronic keypad, right? Yeah. And so, any chance the electronic keypad has been removed by you guys to see if you can determine? It's not a, like, that fancy of a safe. It's not, it's not going to keep a record of how many times it's It's not that. Okay. Um, I mean, and the only other time you could hear gunshots outside of filming was, like, the National Guard, is what we were told, because we all heard a bunch of shooting. Okay. But Hannah never, like, told you, hey, I'm going to go out this weekend and no. takes a couple people out and, you know. We have a text that you need to know about. No. Yeah. Um, uh, when I had heard about this uh, and I talked to Seth, he sent me a text that he had from Hannah back in August on the previous set about her asking to go. Okay, so you already have it. Never mind. Just want to be transparent. Okay? <laughs> yeah, okay. but nothing from rest. No. Okay, that's um more you know the concern. Um, so it's after you check these rounds that everything was taken back then. Yes. And it was after EMT and everybody else got there. Two. And which two are they? Jensen and Swin. Okay. And they're both the martial arts? Yes. Okay. Were they both loaded? Uh, with dummies, yes. Did you unload them before? Yes. Okay. Yeah, where did you put those dummy rounds? Can I talk about them? Mm hmm Okay. Um, those ones I actually did end up throwing away in a panic. And I wouldn't be able to tell you why. Okay. Um, did you throw them on set or after? On set. Okay. Just in the trash? Yeah. Okay. Um, but you checked those ones. Yes. And you pulled them out of a belt. Yes. For both guns. Yes. Okay. The... box of ammo that was being used to load guns. Do you remember what it looked like? The one that was used for Alex's gun? It was just a standard white box. Does that mean distinguishing markings? Did it say anything on it? When, when I saw it, I didn't see the label. Um, Nicole described the label to me after a few days later from what she saw. But I think it was on the bottom side when I was looking at it because I didn't see it. On the bottom? Like on the, you know, when it's laying down, like I see the top side, but I think it might have been on the bottom. Like when the lid is taken off and the lid is laid down. Yeah, or like on, I don't remember, I don't know where it was. It was Well, how did the, you, so I mean, you, but you opened this box, how did it open? It was open, but I slid out the cartridge. Yeah, so it's not a top-loading box. Okay. It's on the side, yeah. So it could have, like, the label could have been on the lip, on the bottom side, or on the other, the back end of it. But right. I didn't look. Okay. Okay. Was there anyone that was going to a little bit gun? I don't know. Who yeah. would have been the possible people who would have seen her a little bit gun? In your ashes. Nicole? Maybe Nicole, maybe someone inside the church. I don't know when she loaded it. The question then is, would she load, would she take the rounds and load them at the church, or would she load the gun at the front front? She could have done either or. Okay. Okay. But you didn't see her. No. All right. Let's go through these. Do you know how many boxes were on the top of that cart? I don't. Okay. But how many, I mean, you went through one box, right? Just after the incident? Yeah. Were there any others? No. How did you know to go through that box? Because I knew that that was the box that Hannah had used. Because she specifically asked me to for that box. I saw this separate box right there. Okay. 
so this is the one that was handed. Okay. Would you say it looks like what you saw? Yeah. I mean, you label them, but that's the label that Nicole described to me. Okay. But, yeah. That's... But as far as setup, because this, I mean, um, it's pretty distinguishable when you have random ones missing out of places. It, there should be a couple more from what I remember. There was a couple more with silver primers. Okay. And you pulled them out, but where, did you put them back in here? Or where did they go after you? I should have put them back on there, or if I didn't, I might have just left them on the cart. Okay. So here's another view of that box. Is there a reason why these ones are missing? That's what I'm here to ask you. Okay. Because you have been pulling out of, to check out of here. Mm -hmm. Did you pull them all individually? Like, do you remember which ones were missing? I never pulled past, like, this point. Okay. Did you take the whole thing out, though? No, I only slid it, you know, at that point, and I checked random ones. Okay. So these could have been gone. Maybe, yeah. Okay. So, these are on the top of the cart. Okay. You know what caliber is this? They're 45 golds. They're 45. Okay. Um, so then those could have been the couple that I might have not put back in then. Could have been there. Okay. Because they also have... These are suspected life. Okay. Okay. That, well, that would make sense because I saw... I saw uh, about this amount and thought they were life. Three total? Three or four. Four probably including the, the one that was spent. Okay. This one. Yes. Um, and did you drop this one on the, on the top of the cart too? Uh, yeah, I should have left it there. Okay. This is an adult. Whose fault is this? Mm, it was on the top of the cart. Also suspected by ground. Was it checked, like, rattled or anything? Mm -hmm. And it didn't rattle in the hole on the side? Mm -hmm. And it's a 45? 45, cool. She never pulled from a 45 until that box because we didn't have any initially. And then she found some, and then Seth gave us one box. But you were pulling from belts, right? I was so I wasn't pulling. Well, yeah, but the ones that I pulled from already had indents in them. Okay. These are those two. So one of these is a dummy, but do you know which two one? of these are? I don't know. I don't know. I think these two were the suspected live, and then that one was a dummy. But that's what I'm saying. Do you remember where you put these rounds? These ones? The live ones that came out of that box. This is the top of the cart. Mm -hmm. I either put them back on the box or I left them on the cart. But she's saying if you left them on the cart, would you have left them together or? Yeah, after I checked the box. So you, you're saying you checked the box. Do you mind? Yep. And you think you found a couple of live rounds. Mm -hmm. Pull them out, be free to throw them on the cart. Yeah. Maybe, or you put it back in the box. You yeah. can't remember. No, I can't remember. It's one of those. Okay, okay. So that's Alex. One of these is suspected life. In his belt? In his belt. Who wanted his belt? Hannah. What caliber is it? It's 45 cold. I don't get it, what she said that we didn't have 45s. And we unloaded his belt before him, but she said that we didn't have any, and that's why she wanted more. Or why she wanted... Well, there's a lot of 45 cool. As far as I know, we only had two, so I don't know how... Two boxes. So, well, the first one, the one that was pulled from, I didn't know we had, she randomly found, but then there was the other one from Seth Kenny, but... I don't even know if she knew about that box. What do you mean randomly found? 
She, that morning, she says she found a box of 45 long cold dummies on the safe. And she, you know, was shocked and was like, wow, 45 long colds. And that's what she told me. And so she was pretty happy about that and then told the cold leader to go get it from the cop truck. Okay. Have you seen that box before? No. Um, this is another, and I believe this one was a suspected live. I think that's why it's separated. These all came from this box? Mm -hmm. Well, this matches the box that Seth described that a gaffer's tape and wrote on, uh, wrote on the Sharpie. Um, these are the so bags. There's two boxes you could lie around now? They're everywhere. I mean, they're in that box. There's one in another box. Like I said, there's those ones on the carts. There's ones in belts. I think we have seven total. Don't take my word, but I think about seven total. Okay. Um, what's the significance in this? They're just... It, I mean, these are just thrown in a bag. So in a bag, in one of those bags that she had on the prop truck. Oh, okay. Um, this was your guys's cart. Yep. Whose bag is this? Yeah, this bag. Is. Okay, is it one of the fanny packs you're talking about? She, and she carried rounds in there. Yeah. So this is what gets me, is you said you took all these guns back. That's our replica. But you said you took them all back, right? I must have missed this one. But yeah, I took all the real guns back at least. Okay. Do you know what was in the UPS box? That, that's where I had my badges for my actors. Okay. Like these, like, where is it? These yeah. little? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And who's water ball? Uh, one of ours. And then underneath, underneath that is a... I think that's a call sheet. It's a call sheet. Call sheet right? And then, you know, every day we... Not this matters, but every day our uh, crafty guy would come around with chocolate. And that, that's what I just grabbed right before the incident. And what's that? That is a case that has our knife kit. So it has a bunch of... Um, replicated knife for Alan. And what's that mean? That's another box now. This says one. Eight, eight, 12, gauge. Twelve gauge. Twelve gauge. And these are people's um, own clothes. Uh, no, those are um, canvas. You, no, it's just it's torn up canvas that we had used the day before to use as like a blanket for Alec to throw his gun down. Okay, and he was supposed to do that. Yes, yeah. so, well, that's why they're saying that people throw guns. Yeah. Can I see another question back up here? I don't mean to get yeah. your question. Go ahead. I'm sorry. This is the stage you guys use. Here. So that picture is taken of this. You said that what the belt that was on there. Mm -hmm. You got one, two missing. You have one, two, three, there four. There was two car or two belts on. Yeah, that's not the same one. There was one, two, three, four. So that's there's two. There's a belt here and there's a belt there. So that belt is that belt, not that belt, because you would need four rounds there, not three. I guess, tell me about this mysterious box that showed up. I mean, how many boxes did you guys have before? Um, the dummies. I I don't know how many we had. It would be on the invoice. Um, but I know that Hannah was complaining that we didn't have any 45 long clothes and she needed more dummies. So I think it was on October 12th is when I picked up from Seth. Do you remember what that box looked like? It was another white cardboard box. Okay. Um, he didn't give as much. He gave us extra half load or half load. Yeah, half loads. Um, and then 
I didn't remember uh, or know that he gave us um, a, a box of 45 long colts. Um, and then he told me afterwards, he was like, remember, I gave you this, and this is how I remember that I gave you this. And then... So that could have been from him. I mean, it doesn't match the description of the, the... The one that Hannah used doesn't match the description that Seth gave me. His was the one with the gaffer's tape that was raining Sharpie. But he provided more than one box. And not of dummies. He provided the, the half-loaded blanks. And but didn't you have to go back for dummies? I went to... Uh, so he gave me one, but then he I went to Billy Ray for dummies. Those, like, two or three boxes I told you about. Okay. And those were all 45 one cool? No. They were 44 40s. Okay. And 38 40s. 38 40s? So, so no 45 long colts at all. Not, not on the invoice. Oh. Then you have it. Okay, you sent it to me. Mm -hmm. oh. This is the um, safe. Yeah, that's the safe. And then this is the truck that you guys use. Did you mostly go in and out the back or the side? Mostly the back. Okay. And is this pretty much how it was the whole time that you guys? No. I mean, things got moved around a lot. It was a lot more organized, but as we were running around, things got kind of chaotic. Okay. But you always lock the guns up in the safe. Yes. So, Hannah had that out the the day of. She... The she, day of what? The, like, the day of the incident. Um, something didn't finish. She said it was okay if one stayed out. What do you mean something didn't... Like, it didn't fit in the safe? Yeah, or, 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 like, it fit in the safe. It's just we had so many guns in here that we had to take one out, and she she said that it was okay to have one out, and I didn't question her because she was more experienced than I was in armor. Okay. I mean, I would say that's not safe practice, so you, you know, there's a better picture of it, too. Yeah. When was this taken? After? Uh, yeah. So how that, do you think these... Is that these... gun belt? Um, I believe so. Maybe. This is where you guys would hang all of them? Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, how do you think he's got in this? Nicole? I don't know. When I talked to Nicole afterwards, she said that it was stacked in, like, along with other boxes inside one of the, the white boxes. So, but that you originally picked up? Or, I mean, it it could have been the one. Mm, it sounds like it came from, because she picked it up on the left side of the safe. And those two were the initial ones that Hannah, Hannah got from. Said when she went with me, she took the ammo and I took the guns. And, um, and then the other box that I picked up, that right side of the safe, was the one I picked up later. There, there should have been two on the left side and one on the right side. And but it's just kind of weird to me because Hannah says she got it on the safe, but then Nicole found the box stacked inside the white um, cardboard box. So but she said that she pulled it from the truck. Nicole. Mm -hmm. And this was after Hannah told her to go get it. Yeah, she said there's a box of 45 more holes in the truck. And wanted Nicole to go get it. Well, why did she need... I mean, she guys are pulling from the belts, though. She... I don't know. She was very specific about what she wanted to use. Like, I personally like using the indented primers because that's how I know that something's been inert um, and has already been, you know used 
And when she saw me doing that one time, she didn't, she didn't like that I did that. She said that she always uses new ones. And so same with the 45 long call. She said that the other ones just didn't fit as properly and that she wanted 45 long call. Okay. Did she ever mention the issues she was having with Alex Gunn? Mm-hmm. The day of the incident? No. Not that I recall. I know she was having trouble with a different gun, but we sent that back to Seth and he fixed it. Okay. Um, did you ever see Hannah do anything unsafe or that seemed unsafe with these guns? Did she seem... I mean, the only thing that I kind of questioned was when she was willing to... I, and I, I wasn't, you know, around this when it happened, but I remember she was pulling a full load, and I don't know who asked for it, but someone asked for a full load to scare the horse, um, to make it run off after it's stunt motor. Don't say hi. <laughs> don't have none. <laughs> See her at the wedding. <laughs> Our daughter's getting married. Um, um, She's uh, so surreal. Yeah, when our stunt rider was riding on a horse and he was supposed to, like, get shot, um, he's supposed to fall off and they wanted the horse to keep going, so she allowed them to um, use a full load, and I was told to never shoot a full load near a horse, um, and that was the only time. Is there anything else that points out to you with, you know, anything that went on? Um, I mean, there were the accidental discharges that were reported. I mean, at least mine was, I reported it, but by Hannah, you know, there was nothing else that I thought was really unsafe. And Alec and Joel both were telling her she was doing a great job and that they felt safe. So I didn't really question her. Okay. I have a few questions. Yep. So these two rounds, those two rounds, were they dummies or suspected what? I'd have to go through all the photos. Those look. And that's why I'm curious where those other rounds went that were in the gun. Two rounds missing here if they were pulling. I don't, I mean, it's too much of a stretch, but it's just coincidental. That, uh, right, the same car, the same car. Well, so, no, so this one is the spent round. Yeah. That's, oh, which one? That's, that's the, that's, that's the that round. one. That's the round that did. Sorry. Okay. So that's why, you know, it's kind of, you know, hard for me to figure out what came where because everything was so messed with after the incident. Um, I apologize about that. Yeah. If you ever end up in a situation again. I just, I know. I wasn't really thinking of this becoming a case at that point in time. It was more just shock and just reacting. Question. Uh, Did somebody reach bullet projectile as a signature as it's going through the rifling and stuff? Can you, can you figure out, can you, Trace these bullets with each these these rounds to where they were purchased. Yeah. And let me explain why. So I'm sure you talked to said about this, or maybe the manufactured round is, you know, let's just take for instance Winchester. Mm-hmm. Okay. Winchester has their logo on now. So. Mm-hmm. Okay. These. So this this logo here. Mm-hmm. Is Starling Brass. That's okay. who makes this, okay? okay? 
Starlin brass does not make live ammunition at all. None of their workers could have done something and just like malicious. Right. Sterling brass isn't out of New Mexico. Okay. So PDQ buys components. That's that's all they sell is the cartridge. Okay. Sterling brass does not sell anything else besides cartridges. Okay. And then from there, you can do what you choose with it. If you're a reloader, you can make them. Okay. You'd have to buy Obviously, your projectile and then your gunpowder in your primer. in the primer. So, who buys the turtle brass? PDQ. And it's only the cartridge. That's why you can't buy from them. Okay. So, all right. In New Mexico, the only person that well tied to this. PDQ bought style up as, what's it called? Starline. Starline brass cartridges. And they would assemble dummy rounds. Right. Okay. They also have Starline would assemble dummy rounds? No, no, PDQ. Oh, PDQ. Did PDQ also assemble live rounds? Okay. Once upon a time. Live well, rounds. they could. I mean, they could still be doing it. I don't know how many employees PDQ has. Did you ever see anybody else in there? Just that. Mm-hmm. Did you ever see any reloading equipment in there? I don't think so. Would you know what it looked like? No. Okay. They look like handles and stuff. It's like usually set up at the end of a table yeah. and they like have handles so you can, it's called pressing boards. Yeah, it was more of an office than a like actual work space. So PDQ, do they sell, is PDQ only for props for movies? Or is it also arm sales for me if I want to go buy some live rounds to go charge you? Yeah, they don't do like, I mean, I don't, I've never been in there, so you, you've been in there. You would know, do they have like shelves of stuff for people to buy? It seemed more like a private office and it was always just really messy because he would send stuff to several different productions at a time. He'd be preparing them. So there could be just stuff everywhere. You have any interviewed stuff yet? Mm-hmm. A few times. Did Seth say that he sells? He doesn't sell. They have. He has had button stuff make ammunition. Okay, but PDQ. What I'm trying to get to is PDQ. Their business is to provide props. For movies. Mm-hmm. PDQ doesn't receive revenue from selling live rounds. No. Okay. So that's not their normal course of business. Right. They don't have boxes of live rounds for sale. I mean, that yeah. you know of. Not, not that I know of. Well, when he said that when he gives people ammo that he personally, like when he's boxing them, that he, he said that he checks each round. So someone at PDQ produced these live rounds at some point in time. That's the assumption. Okay. It's pretty, I mean, the circumstantial evidence is pretty strong. Right. Okay. Am I allowed to work? Okay. Yes. I'm sure Lisa talked about that as well. Um, so what's your theory? Someone doesn't know how to check rounds correctly? When they're boxing them? And it would be somebody doesn't know how to check rounds, they go into boxes. Or they were in a rush, or. They're in a rush, and then the person put them out of the box, doesn't check them. Didn't check them. Didn't check them. So it was a confluence of. People not doing it. Paying attention. In the rounds that you checked, though, for all your six rounds for Jensen and Swim, you 
having dented rounds. Mm-hmm. I'm sure of that. But that's kind of where I'm confused, because if you're pulling out a belt, there'd be a lot more empty spaces in those belts. Well, I only pulled out about 12, but I know I took some of the belts back. Back to the truck. I'll have to go through the photos of all the belts, but it didn't seem like there was that many that had that many empty spaces in them. Okay. I mean, I know that there were a couple on the on the, the cart, too, that I grabbed that had indents. Okay. And you unloaded these guns mm-hmm. prior to putting them back in the safe. Yes. And where did you put those rounds? Those rounds I threw away. Oh, yeah. Those are the ones you threw away. Yeah. Okay. Did you recover them? No, we didn't go through trashes. <laughs> there was... I no, mean, I'm just wondering. Don't get me wrong. I'm not doing some check. I don't, I don't know about forensics and crimes from this case. Okay. Yeah. So that's kind of where we're at right now. Um, and it's really the only thing making sense as to. I mean, if these were, like I said, if they're Winchester rounds, we might be sitting in a different spot. But they're not. They're the ones that somebody made. They're made <coughs> with casings that had to come from, I mean, it would, I know it's still an assumption, but they'll all come from PDQ. So sometime PDQ was making live rounds. All the 45s are thrown into a big bin. They pull from those bins thinking they're all dummies, not realizing that somebody had thrown some live rounds in there. They get thrown into the boxes. They just don't get picked up right. And it just happens to be, I mean, it is a confluence of, of one thing after another. But it's even more, it's more plausible in my mind than somebody trying to plant the, the Jason Bowles theory. Somebody's trying to, I mean, good the sabotage mind. theory? Yeah, the sabotage theory. I mean, you, you, that's, you have to be, Pretty damn lucky, or I don't know how the sabotage works. To know that that box was going to be picked, that, that round was going to be picked out of it. It's going to be, in, and not every round in the cylinder was live. Right. And he's going to pull the trigger on that Russian roulette round. But if it push, you know, if it pushes the needle away from Hannah, it's his job, I guess. Um. All right. Any more questions for me? Do you see any culpability with my client at all? Um, so what I'm doing, if there was anything that pointed out to me, obviously I'd be doing something about it. Um, we're obviously a month in. So I cannot say what the district attorney is they don't I mean like I said I gotta do my part and then I give it to them and then but typically because I was married to a DA at one time as I understand it they take the report and they base you know any charges filed on the report they don't do they don't try to supplement criminal investigation talents expertise experience for years it would make it I mean, they they can, they, they can always file. Oh, yeah. In, in oh, no, sense. I know they have complete latitude. These are yeah. Good freaking luck. But they're already aware that, you know, of what I am doing, of where I am, and, um, you know, they're aware that I will not be filing. Okay. Just... Really bad, bad luck. It's, uh, yeah. Do you have any questions, sir? I don't think so. Tony says they had it. <laughs> Better not. Better just not bring it up at all. What's her theory? 
Um, well, I just informed her about the whole ammunition situation this morning. Mm -hmm. But she was kind of stuck on the, or, you know, had the whole target shooting thing in her. Because that's all that she's heard. My target was the crew. Was the camel crew? For them to, I just, in other words, here's my theory. I don't, know, I don't think it holds up anymore. But it was my theory before I walked through that door. Uh, yeah. My theory is, camera crews pissed off because they're having to drive back and forth from Albuquerque. They don't like, maybe there's some non-unions or some scabs, whatever. They're pissed off. In this day and age, people are just, whatever. Especially in Albuquerque. Yeah, especially in Albuquerque. Screw these guys. We're going to throw some live rounds into that ammo with all that other ammo. They'll shoot off them. You know, bail, you know, they'll hit a barn or something like that, you know. But nobody, you know, and then they'll know what we said. This safe was, this site, was, uh, this set was not safe. They'll really know and they'll appreciate what we saw on Gamma Proven as a point to be made because they were disgruntled because they had to drive up what they called a rural highway, I 25. Um, and it was that some, some asshole, some guy had a, you know, not only had an axe to grind, but things at home sucked, and maybe he was wrestling with addiction issues or something. Who knows? But he throws in a handful of those. But it, it, that would never account for them being in the boxes like they were, in the um, holsters. And where would they get them from? PDQ. Well, for them to, I mean, it would take one well-known person to be able to say... You know, or to be able to say, like, or should I say, acquire Starline Brass. Oh, and oh yeah, you're really not. Now you're talking about the grassy you knoll. Yeah. That would take, you know, some people are intelligent, but I don't really figure there's. Um. I actually do have a couple questions because I haven't gotten any clarity on this. So it's been confirmed that Dave handed Alec the gun. So we, here's the thing is, we go off of statements of everyone. That's all I can do is, you know, I take your statement and that's what I write down. Okay. Um, you know, without, and then we work off of evidence. And whereas, you know, obviously this wasn't a, it was a live round. Yeah. That's evidence. So as far as everything goes, as far as statements, is that Dave handed off to them. Okay. Yeah. That just, that in of itself was not the correct protocol. But I just didn't understand how he had the gun. So I just didn't know how he came in possession. You know what the protocol is, right? Armor hands it to AD. No, he doesn't hand it to AD. She shows it. Shows it. Shows it, thank you. Shows it. He clears, or he checks, boom, looks good. She then has not released the weapon at all, and then she hands it to the actor. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, is that written protocol? That may be industry custom um, so as far as I'm aware, it's just I've never like it's it's common practice. Yeah, yeah. but the Dave has never like he never called because usually if he needed a gun, he would call for it on the radio, um, or he and he would usually just call for Hannah and but he and he never before that would take a gun from us. So I was just very confused why all of a sudden he had a gun. Any other questions? You sent me a couple of questions. I already asked them. Okay. Oh, just if you got it off the cart, that was the other one. But I just, I don't know about that one. Well, I mean, you got to think. There was not a lot of timing in between. But, I mean, you saw him take the gun. Yeah, and then so, I, I was gone after that, yeah. Like, between, you guys came back at 1.30... There was maybe 11 minutes, 
Did they? Maybe. What, what was the time when the incident happened? We got the call at 1.41. Well, okay. you guys were moving quick. Yeah. Well, Plus there were times money in the industry. Have you searched? Have you gone through PDQ? It's in the works. Huh? It's in the works? Well, it takes PC to get in there. Oh, I understand. It takes statements. Did you ask Seth and he said no? So, um, I'm sure he would be, I just don't, you know, like I said, there's a lot of stuff I'll be transparent with this in, like, you know, how I asked you about the DNA. Um, I've asked everybody for a download of their phones. Um, but, you know, a phone is something where if you delete stuff, I'm going to find it. We have the tools to do that. Um, if I tell you I'm going to do something, like, you can't change your DNA. You can change what's, at a, what's in the vicinity of places. So... Um, you know, you have to play. In the end, it's just going to answer a question mm -hmm. of where the rounds came from. If that's in fact where they came from. But they could not, or there could be nothing that points there when I get there. I mean, it would be a bigger stretch to believe they didn't come from there than to believe that they would, so, you know. Well, and especially Billy Ray only provided, or provided stuff that was not. You'll see that it's 30, 40, 44, 44, 40, 38, 40. I think from him. Mm -hmm. Did you have the invoice for PDQ, too, for the animal? I do, but I'll, the invoice that I have is all blanks. You have the one sheet. They're on the, on the same one at the bottom that has the, the dummy. Um, Does it show how many? I just I I can't remember if it was more than just the one box. Mm. Oh yeah, you're right. Sorry, they are uh, forty-five. Just that one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Seventeen dummy forty-four, forty, forty-five long call and twelve gauge. A total amount of uh, coin fee is two hundred and dollar fifty a piece, three hundred bucks. Wait, how many rounds? Oh, he gave us forty-four forty. What the wrong business? Oh, okay. Dummy rounds. So two hundred rounds. Oh, well, there's twelve gauge in there too. Oh, twelve gauge and forty-four forty. He didn't bring it apart. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, there's three different kinds of rounds in there. Do you notice the labels look different on Billy Ray's? Do you know who provides to Billy Ray or who makes? So here's the thing is, these all have, all have to, I mean, well, since you, you don't know the difference in his box, there's a label on it. And the invoice from him is here too, right? Yeah. It's lots of props. The issue is, is I don't remember if he gave me two or three. Because I felt like there were three, but there's only two listed. Um, from Billy Ray. But that makes me think that there were only two then. From him? Yeah. Well, do you remember what you put them in? He just gave me the white boxes themselves, okay. just individually. But his, you have to return to him. Is well, that right? I, he already texted well, me about that, and he was just like, I don't think I'm going to get those back. And I told him probably not. Because his are rentals. Yeah. Is Seth's rentals, or... Um... This is purchase. 
Because those are the dummies or rentals. Yeah, that makes sense. With the just because those can be reused. Um, but with blanks, he said that when it comes to productions purchasing those because they're purchased and not returned, but the armory usually takes the ammo and with them and it doesn't give it to production, they take it with them like for their next production. A business been taking dummy rooms. Interesting. Right. Um, yeah, like I said, I mean, I think I talked to you about the phone. That's the only other thing that I'm going to request. Um, you want to extract your phone? Mm-hmm. Who does it for you guys? Uh, RCFL. Okay. So, I, there's, obviously there's two ways to go about it. One is consent, but there's a warrant. Um... Try not to be an asshole to anybody during this whole thing. Um, we tell you what happens. My girlfriend about eight years is a partner and a friend in a digital, you know, in Denver. Mm-hmm. So that's been a lot of time. They're going to go into your phone and they'll pull up everything. Mm-hmm. I mean, every single thing. Okay. You'll probably, you, you have some private stuff. Guys have a lot more stuff than girls do. Oh, I don't know. know. I, I, juveniles. Yeah. Have. It's just I mean, incredible stuff. But they're looking for only the stuff that applies to this case, and that's all that happens, and, it, and your personal stuff is not made public. No. Um, or any conversation with your attorney is not made public. It is only... And it's not even that it's going to be made public, it's if it's beneficial. Who's doing it? RCFL. RCFL. Yeah. Um, and like we're doing this with Dave's, with Alex, and with Hannah's too. So it's really anything pertaining to rust, and it's really anything that's going to be evidence of a crime. Okay. Um, yes, everything is pulled, but if there's nothing beneficial, then. So they run a program through it. The program will identify everything that has anything to do with rust. Okay? And it pulls it. They're not some guy going through every single little thing. It's a program that does it for them. Yeah. And that's why, you know, I've done phones myself. And um, they take, like, weeks. You have the goggle and all that? You have to go through every single little thing. But if I give it to them, then they have their nice way of doing it. Um, so they only extract things. It's a, like, so it's a full extraction, like but the only thing that would be used if it pertains to us. Okay. So, okay. so I can't do, like I said, if you deleted stuff on your phone, um, it's going to show. Yeah. I, I can't delete it. Well, just saying that's why it has to be full extraction. Got it. Um, there's only one way to do it. Yeah. That's not like pick and choose. No, it's, it's, I think it's the nuclear option, but you know, it's one way to do it, but go ahead. I think no, I, I just have some photos from every now and again that I deleted, but nothing, I mean, some pertain to rest, but more of just things that like I was done with, so I just deleted them because I didn't need it on my phone anymore. Right. Which is fine. It's not, you know, like I said, it's not that big of a deal unless you're like, Hey, I made these rounds. No, I'm fine. Yeah. So, like I said, I'm trying not to be an asshole to anybody um, because technically this could take a long time. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to do for everyone is say, like, when are you available? When are you going to be okay without your phone for maybe two, maybe three days max? Because RCFL also, I've already had a conversation with them. They've already, um, we've already discussed kind of how this is going to go. Because I, if I get a warrant, I don't have to give it back. Yeah. You know, like I said, I'm trying not to be an asshole to anybody. Um, so I want to set up a time where it can go there. They can have somebody analyze it. And then it comes back. And then it goes back to you. And then that's it. 
So it's up to you guys, or you, really. It's your phone. When would they be ready for it? Um, I just have to make a phone call to them and see. And that's what I'm saying. Like, I just got to coordinate that with them. But I want to make sure it's not going to, like, interfere with something serious that you have going on. Um, so that's what I want to find out. When they have availability, let us know, and we'll coordinate. We'll find some time in there. Okay. Okay. Mm, that's right. I think it's easy to Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We could have, yeah. Well, actually, they did have time tomorrow, but it's going to do it to call them now. Are they in Albuquerque or here? Albuquerque. Okay. Mm. And then you go over there. Yeah. No, that, that's fine. That, I mean, I live there, so. You you wouldn't be able to go in. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Come, come to your place. Oh, they come to my house. No. No. Take you take it. Mm-hmm. So she has to come back up here. No, I can. I mean, I have to go down the Albuquerque because I, I have to be present there. So I can just. Oh, really? You're present for the extraction? I have to take it. Oh, yeah. So well, that's right. You have to check it out. Can I just move you like outside of the place and give it to you? Mm-hmm. Okay. Right, and then, just, like, just put it to me. Yeah. And then I'd have to I mean, figure out how to get it back. Or, yeah, either way. Like I said, I'm just trying to return everybody's stuff as soon as possible. Yeah, that's fine. Um, the less there is, the less it goes you know, I want to die, but I did an extraction, and it took two days just to do the extraction on this phone because we have so much stuff. I don't keep anything on mine. Like, oh, huh. well, I just I run everything. I run, and I, in addition to my law practice, I, I help run a couple of businesses. So I'm, I just. You're, yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Everybody's phone's I, I don't have to hide, but it's just tons of data. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Not mine. Not mine. I'm like. Well, you've been wonderful about coordinating, being patient with us. Thank you so much. I mean, yeah, as transparent as you possibly can, because really, it helps her so much with peace of mind. What's going on? Where am I in this thing? What's happening? You know, and what happened? Because she cares. You know, she's gone through a lot of. And the nightmares and the little PTSD from the whole, the whole thing because somebody got killed. Right. Right. You know, virtually right from her. So um, I think today may help um, a little bit. Yeah. You know, answer some questions and stuff. So thanks. Appreciate that. Right. Okay. Well, well, well. That was Sarah's interrogation. I know you were looking forward to it. It was rather lengthy. I didn't want to cut out too much of it. I wanted you to be able to watch the whole thing. There was a lot of paper ruffling and some other annoyances. I did my best that I could with this file. Sometimes those people in those rooms just like to shuffle papers endlessly. And we don't appreciate that. I've got other interviews for this unsolved mystery that happened on the movie set of Russ. I will be presenting them. I don't want to reveal my hand just yet, but you won't be disappointed. You might be sick of this case by the time I'm done with it. I'm going to give you a lot of good footage, a lot of good files, and a lot of good interviews. Please like, comment, subscribe, share, and turn on bell notifications so you don't miss any future episodes. We're almost at 100,000 subscribers and I know you're happy about that. Because I'm happy too. And until next time, remember to stay safe out there because you know it's a dangerous world.